It's The Real News. I'm Aaron Maté. As mass Palestinian protests enter their fourth month, Israel is intensifying its already crippling blockade of the Gaza Strip. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Israel will close Karam Shalom, the only crossing for commercial goods into Gaza. This will ban all imports and exports on top of the sweeping besiegement already in place. Israel is also reducing the fishing zone for Gazans off the Mediterranean coast to just six miles out, down from nine. More actions are said to be coming. This comes as Israeli forces continue to open fire on Palestinians taking part in the Great March of Return. The Gaza Health Ministry says that overall, 136 Palestinians have been killed and more than 15,600 injured. Israeli forces killed at least one Palestinian and wounded nearly 400 on Friday. The blockade and casualties have overwhelmed Gaza's crippled healthcare system, which the UN warns is already at a breaking point. Joining me from Gaza is Dr. Bassem Naim, former Minister of Health in Gaza. Welcome, Dr. Naim. Um, let me start by asking you, how will this intensification of the already crippling blockade of Gaza impact its people? Uh, do, you, uh, do you know that uh, Gaza is under uh, Israeli siege for more than 12 years now, and uh, the, the borders are nearly totally blocked uh, and controlled by Israel? Uh, it means that this, this is a new step in accelerating the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza, and uh, it will uh, increase uh, the need at, in, in all aspects and at all levels not only in the health system, health system, social affairs, and uh, all the needs of Gazans. I think this will be an, an, a step towards uh, increasing the catastrophe in Gaza. And what is the state of the health system right now in Gaza? As I mentioned, hospitals overwhelmed with uh, the wounded, the dead, and uh, in, in now this uh, uh, fourth month of the Great March of Return. Uh, maybe not all of your audience know that uh, this, the, the Great Return March increased an acute on the top of a chronic crisis for the healthcare system. Uh, the healthcare system in Gaza especially is suffering very much because of this blockade for more than 12 years now. Uh, the people here, because of poverty, because of unemployment, they are dependent, de dependent nearly totally on the governmental health care system. We have here 12 hospitals and uh, around 55 primary, care, primary health care centers uh, yani related or affiliated to the governmental system. Uh, there's no well-developed uh, non-governmental health care system. The private uh, health sector is is very poor because, as I said, because of the poverty and unemployment rate and the very bad economical situation. Uh, when you have uh, added to the chronic problems of the healthcare system, uh, this new uh, crisis of the Great Return March, so that you receive nearly every day hundreds of wounded people, plus uh, many people killed. Uh, this will uh, accelerate the problem. Uh, for example, today you are talking about uh, only four hours electricity per 24 hours a day. Uh, in, in the regular house, uh, houses, you might can continue your normal life or semi-normal life without uh, electricity. But in a hospital or in a primary health care center, you cannot do anything without electricity. Most of the uh, health services are depending on the presence of uh, regular current, of, uh, on the presence of electricity. Added to this, uh, we, we are talking about uh, around 50% of the medicine should be, uh, should be served or given to the people through the healthcare system, the governmental healthcare system, are not, uh, are not available. 50% you know, zero stock in the, in, the, in, the, in the Ministry of Health, uh, Hospitals, and Primary Health Care Center. Added to this, uh, today, because of the problems of electricity and other technical problems, millions of liters of daily of sewage water are pumped into the sea, 
And you can imagine in this very hot summer, and the only chance for the people to, for uh, during vacations to go swimming is in is all into the sea. Millions of uh, not treated sewage water is pumped into the sea, and you can Im you can imagine what 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 this means for the public health for the public uh, hygiene. Uh, most of the households here are suffering of uh, lacking water or drinking water uh, because of problems of electricity and because of problems of water which is not enough in the in the in the in the, in the Gaza Strip. I, I I think as I said. Uh, many problems, many chronic problems, uh, uh, and the health system here in Gaza is, is suffering of many chronic problems. When you talk about the people, I, I, either the patient or the staff, you have totally other problems. Uh, for example, thousands of Palestinians in Gaza who are trying to go to leave Gaza Strip for treatment abroad in, in Israel, in, Gaza, in, in the West Bank, in Jordan, in Egypt, uh, they have to wait sometimes uh, 70 days, 80 days to get a reply from the Israeli authority uh, that they are allowed or not allowed to leave Gaza Strip for treatment abroad. Uh, and you can imagine what does it mean to get an answer after a 70 or 80 days. Many of the patients dying while they are waiting for, uh, for the answer. Uh, when when you look to the to the staff, uh, medical staff or health staff, uh, many of many of them are uh, uh, are not able to leave Gaza Strip for any courses or any conferences or any uh, upgrading uh, diplomas for years now. Uh, added to this, most of the staff, uh, w which we are talking in the health system and in, in the government health system. We are talking about nearly 11, 10 to 11,000 uh, uh, people. Uh, most of them, they are getting 40, 30 percent of their salaries now for more than uh, five years. Dr. Naeem, as you're speaking about the uh, struggles of Gazan healthcare workers, I'm, I'm thinking about also those who have been shot and wounded or killed, uh, including 21-year-old uh, Razan Al Najjar, uh, who was uh, came to worldwide attention when she was killed out in the field uh, treating wounded uh, Palestinian uh, protesters during the Great March of Return, and I'm wondering uh, now with this news that the uh, blockade is intensifying, uh, the blockade that was already brutal when these protests began, um, coupled with the fact that every single week you have Palestinians being shot with impunity uh, by Israeli forces. Under these conditions, can these protests continue? I think the protests will continue. The message is to Israel is trying to send to the Gazans that uh, you have only one choice, to die in silence. You are not allowed to raise your voice because Gazans, all Gazans, men and women, all Palestinian factions, all political uh, groups, all uh, NGOs are participating on those uh, great return march uh, protests. Uh, peacefully, and hundred percent peacefully, trying to raise their voice against the blockade, against the oppression of Gazans under the Israeli uh, siege. Uh, the message is from the other side: is you have no choice other than to uh, to die in silence and to accept this dire situation. And I think Gazans decided to respond clearly peacefully and to go to the fence and to show that to show the whole world including the israelis as the occupying power that we are not accepting to die in peace we will raise our voices we will uh, sacrifice all what we can in order to achieve our uh, freedom uh, dignity and uh, free life dr basim Naim, the former health minister of gaza speaking to us from gaza thank you Please, thank you very much. And thank you for joining us on The Real News.